Hi, welcome to the Tinkerer's Venture. I'm Kai. This is an in-depth technical review for the Ironman Phone Cell Pro suspension. So what is Phone Cell exactly? Is it really as good as they claim? And is it better than a regular gas truck shock? We'll find out in this video. We will also review the pros and cons, things I like and don't like about the overall suspension kit. And at last, we will compare it to the other suspension product in a similar price range. We will also stack it up against the more expensive options as well as the cheaper ones. So you know exactly what you're getting for your particular build. All right, let's get started. This piece of foam is the foam cell living inside this foam cell pro shock. It feels exactly like most other closed cell foam product, like a yoga mat. So why on earth you want to put a piece of foam inside a shock absorber? It is not black magic, and the fundamental purpose is actually quite simple. The reason we have gas inside a regular shock absorber is to reserve space for the piston rod. As the piston rod enters the shock body, it will take up volume. So we rely on the compression of the gas volume to make room for the piston rod. If we don't have gas, the shock will be hydrolocked. The foam cell sheet serves exactly the same purpose as gas in the regular shock. So what does it do better than just using gas? For that, let's actually bring up the one-page marketing cell sheet from Ironman. Let's review each and every benefit they claim and see if they all make sense. Let's go from the bottom to top. The first benefit is smoother ride by eliminating internal high pressure. This is a true description because the phone cell pro shock has zero additional pressure charge. Most shock people are used to have more or less some pressure charge. So how does the phone cell allow us to run no pressure? In my opinion, it doesn't. From my reasoning, the low internal pressure has nothing to do with the phone cell. It is actually because this shock being a twin tool construction. For a twin tool shock, in addition to the piston, the compression damping is also controlled by the fixed base valve. It is because this construction allows all twin tool shock run at low pressure. Mono tool shock does not have this fixed base valve, so they have to run high pressure to have functional compression damping. We went over this in detail in my last video, so I won't digress further. I will link that video in the description below. Check it out after this one. And in fact, even if you want to put pressure inside a phone cell shock, you really can't, because we probably can't really pressurize this gas inside this phone. There are many regular twin tool shock also don't have any pressure charge, all because they have the fixed base valve. The second claim benefit is maximize oil capacity and thermal cooling. I will actually break this down into two separate things. First, does a phone cell shock allow more oil? And from my reasoning, no. If you remember, the fundamental purpose of the phone is to reserve space for the piston rod. If we have an apple-to-apple -apple comparison, meaning the same shock diameter and length, just in different constructions, I don't see how we can fit more oil in the phone cell twin tube, because we are still reserving the space for the same piston rod. And if we take a step further, the phone cell sheet will probably take up more volume than a bulk of pure gas. So if strictly talking about the phone cell technology and comparing the same size shock, this technology does not allow us to fit more oil. But for the Ironman Phone Cell Pro, it has more oil simply because it has a larger diameter. And in fact, if you look at their regular phone cell shock, the non-pro version, it is also larger in diameter than their gas charge shock. The second claim in this bullet point is better thermal cooling. That, I think, is very true. In both the traditional twin tube and mono tube, only part of the length of the shock body is in contact with fluid and dissipate heat. Whereas on the phone cell twin tube, the entire length of the shock body is in contact with fluid. Therefore, we have more surface area for better thermal cooling. On the third bullet point, it says, increase shock performance and eliminates shock fade. We also reviewed the topic of shock fade in detail in my last video. But the gist of it is, there are three separate root causes for shock fade. Aeration, which is mixing gas and fluid. Shock fluid viscosity drop due to temperature and fluid cavitation, which is vapor bubble forming from within due to combination of low pressure and high temperature. For the phone cell technology, what it really eliminates is aeration, which Ironman specify in the notes below. But aeration is only part of shock fade. For viscosity loss and cavitation, the phone cell technology does help by allowing full length thermal cooling. However, theoretically speaking, because the phone cell does not allow additional pressure charge, it loses an important tool to fight against cavitation. But practically speaking, we need to look at how the entire shock is implemented. 
By simply being a massive shock, it has a lot of thermal benefit, the same concept as a big brake rotor. So in summary, from my analysis and reasoning, what the phone cell technology allows is really two things, eliminating aeration, which is part of shock fade, and allow better thermal cooling. And just to be clear, I still believe all these claim benefits are true, and they all apply to this overall phone cell pro shock. I just want to be clear which of these benefits are actually caused by the phone cell, so that you have a better understanding of this technology. Now that we have a better understanding what the phone cell technology is and is not about, let's take a step back and look at the suspension kit as a whole. What are the pros and cons, and what I like and don't like about it? Pro number one, extended suspension travel. Unlike some other manufacturers, Ironman didn't even use the marketing keyword extended travel. But from my measurement and testing, the front suspension adds over one inch of droop, and the rear suspension adds two inches. This is about as much as you can add without getting extended brake length and offset lower arms. For someone who's into slow speed crawling and articulation, these are some very important improvements. I conducted some very detailed suspension travel measurement in a previous video, comparing this versus stock. I will link it in the description, check it out after this video. A fellow YouTube channel, Wheel to Get Out There, was kind enough to share me some footages. It was very nice videography, and it was his GX doing actual flexing in the real world. Make sure to check it out. Pro number two, threaded body with infinite ride height adjustability. The other type of ride height adjustable coilover is using snap ring like the Bilstein's. Those only have a few settings with larger increments. You also need to take the coilover off the truck and compress the spring to make adjustments. It was quite a hassle and most DIY users cannot really do it at home. With the threaded body, you can easily make fine-tuned adjustments on the vehicle to compensate for the Toyota Lean. Pro number three, OE style maintenance-free components and finishes. For the shocks, I really like they use the OE style rubber bushings. They're maintenance-free, noise-free, last a long time, and dampens vibration. Most racing shocks use the spherical bearings top and bottom. Those make sense for long travel race trucks with a ton of shock angle articulation. The race truck also want everything rigid so that they can feel everything through the suspension. But those are really the opposite to what we want as everyday enthusiasts. They will wear out, get loose, and start clunking just like the uniballs on the upper control arms. And now, you just introduce two more of those at each shock. Similarly, the Ironman Pro 4 UCA also uses OE style rubber bushings on the frame pivots and sealed factory size ball joint on the outside. Not only they are maintenance free and last a long time, you can also replace them with factory components when the time comes. Check out my two part video about UCA for more details. I will link them in the description below. Being a Northeast guy, rust is my biggest pain in the winter. From my personal experience, your mileage may vary. A good quality painted shock body usually outlasts a zinc plated shock body. Here is my Bilsing 5100s installed on my first gen Tacoma. This is how the shock body look after four to five winters. In comparison, this is a factory coilover from the 2013 GX460. Very little rust is showing on the shock body after nine winters in the same area as the Tacoma. This makes sense because zinc is a sacrificial layer. It's only a matter of time till all the zinc plating was eaten away. Whereas paint or e-coating for the case of Iron Man is a protective coating. A good quality paintwork will last longer in a highly corrosive environment like the road salt. I have seen many of my friends' high-end racing shock rust out in just one winter. So if you have a zinc plated shock body, make sure you wash your car very often and reapply oil-based rust inhibitor multiple times throughout the winter. Pro number four, longevity and reliability. The top two failure modes for most shock is first, losing nitrogen pressure. If it is a monotube, the compression damping will start to change. Second, leaking oil from the main oil seal. By design, I think the Ironman Phone Cell Pro has an advantage in both of these cases. First, this doesn't even have nitrogen charge, so nothing to lose. Second, the seal design on the Phone Cell Pro is also longer lasting. On the factory shock, there's only one main oil seal, so it is exposed to all the elements. At the same time, you need to keep the oil in. On the Phone Cell Pro, we have an additional wiper seal. This wipes off most of the mud and sand, so the main oil seal has a much easier job. But to be fair, most good quality aftermarket shock all include the additional wiper seal. 
So the wiper seal is an upgrade from factory, but nothing groundbreaking. But in addition to the wiper seal, there's also some advantage on the main oil seal design. Because this is a low pressure shock, it uses a low pressure oil seal design. It has large rubber lips on both sides, and each have a radial spring to maintain sealing pressure. The benefit of this design is very low friction and wear. The large, compliant lips can also withstand more surface irregularity. So overall, because of the low shock pressure and the protection from the Viper seal, this oil seal doesn't need to do much. Very easy life. On some high pressure monotubes, such as the Spielstein, they have a more rigid seal. The sealing is achieved by radial interference fit around the shaft. Because it is pure squeeze seal, it has higher friction and wear. It also requires tighter tolerance, so it tends to be more susceptible to surface irregularity. On high-end racing shocks, we sometimes have a U-cup oil seal design. The lips are energized by the oil pressure to create a tight seal. But if we lose shock pressure, we will also lose sealing. So just another reason to check your nitrogen pressure. On the other hand, if we have too much pressure, such as pressure spikes in regular monotubes, yes, we will have a tighter seal, but again, we have high friction and wear. The U-cup seal is a proven design and is commonly used in high pressure applications, but it has more variables and needs a little more attention. What I'm reviewing here are all design principles in theory. In practice, if you take care of your things, a good monotube shock should still last a good amount of time. But in an apple to apple comparison, a twin tube design does have a slight edge on reliability. Pro number five, easy and true DIY shock rebuildability. The phone cell pro is fully rebuildable, just like the higher end Fox, King, and Icon. For those racing shock, few DIY consumers will actually attempt rebuilding them at home. In my opinion, probably the number one roadblock is charging the nitrogen pressure. The most bare bone basic nitrogen charging setup is around two, three hundred dollars to start. And most people simply just don't want to bother. But for the Ironman shock, we have no nitrogen to deal with. So I can say, if you can install the shock onto your vehicle, you have the skill to rebuild the shock in roughly the same amount of time. Each shock rebuild kit is $45, which has a new main oil seal, wiper seal, and a piston wear band. The phone cell sheet does not wear out or deteriorate. Therefore, it is not part of the rebuild kit. Ironman has a detailed rebuild instructions you can easily follow. But speaking of rebuild, when I talked to Ironman USA, they told me since they launched the phone cell pro in the US market, they have yet to receive a single rebuild request. And I tend to believe them, simply being a large overbuilt shock and have all the features we just talked about. I wasn't too surprised this being a very reliable shock. So even though the rebuild is very simple, chances are you may not encounter a need for one. And that is reflected on their much longer three year warranty. Most shock absorbers, even some high end ones would not have this long warranty. Now, enough with all the good stuff. Let's look at the things I didn't like about this design. Con number one, non-site specific rear coil spring for the Forerunner equivalents. As a result, you could have the infamous Toyota Link. Some other manufacturers include different springs for driver and passenger side to compensate this lean. But the Ironman kit does not do this. You could buy the additional train packer spacers to achieve the same result. However, that is not included in the Ironman Phone Cell Pro kit. Con number two, front coilover lower mount bushing width. As some of you know, the newer vehicle has a slightly wider width. Most manufacturers have year specific front coilovers to address this width difference. But Ironman uses the narrower one for all years. So on the newer vehicle, it relies on crushing down the bracket on the lower control arm. I know it may sound very bad for the way I say it, but as a mechanical engineer, I don't see any structural issue with this. Nevertheless, I inserted a thin washer to make up that space when I installed the kit for my friend's GX460. And con number three, too many set screws on the adjustment collar. Iron Man already went a step forward by introducing the second collar used as a double lock jam nut. But for some reason, they introduced seven more set screws all around both collars. From my view, this is totally unnecessary. And in the case of a beginner installer, they will probably lock in all seven set screws. And after the coilover is installed on the truck, they may not be able to reach or even see some of the set screws. If they're not careful, they could damage the shock body, or in other case, they're stuck with that ride height. So when I install the coilovers on my friend's GX, I only install one set screw at the location where I can easily get access to. 
All right, now we have seen all the good and not so good features on the Iron Man Phone Cell Pro. How does it stack up against competition? Just like everything else, we need to put comparison into context. And the biggest context here is price. So I made a pricing chart that includes most popular suspensions for the Toyota Prado platform. And just a few quick disclaimer here, because different trucks and SUVs can have different components, we are looking at just the cost of the front coilovers, which pretty much every truck and SUV will share. So this is not a complete suspension kit. Second, although you could buy some of the shock on assemble and save some money, I list the price of assembled product for the sake of comparison. And third, to avoid repetition and keep the chart clean, I remove the brands that are too similar. You may ask, how can you not include Radflow, Icon, King? In my mind, they have very similar constructions and pricing as Fox. This is just an overall high-level comparison. Along this chart, the Ironman Phone Cell Pro has the largest outer diameter, and it is the most expensive twin tube shock. If we look at the price, I would say the Bilsing 6112 and the Davidson IMS are within the same price range as the Phone Cell Pro. If you don't know already, Ironman runs 20 to 25% sales regularly, so the final street price is directly comparable to these two. Among these three, I would say if you like high-speed off-road, the Bilsing 6112 is probably your best bet because it has a similar outer diameter, but being a monotube, it has a much larger piston. I am not sure how Bilsing implement the final valving, but in theory, the much larger piston allow higher damping force and more precise tuning. So in theory, it's a better choice for high-speed off-road. The Dobinson IMS is a two-inch diameter shock, so it has less oil and thermal mass compared to the other two. The piston size is similar to the Ironman Phone Cell Pro, Despite being a monotube, it doesn't really have an edge over the Ironman. The IMS does have threaded body, which is more desirable than the Bilsing snapping adjustment. So I will only pick the IMS if you really like how a monotube shock ride, which is tend to be stiffer, and you really want the threaded body. Otherwise, the Ironman Phone Cell Pro is my choice if I don't want to hit serious high-speed off-road, and Bilsing if I do. And keep in mind on, on the reliability related stuff like the finish and the seal we reviewed earlier. That should also factor in your decision. Now, if we compare the Phone Cell Pro to the more expensive stuff, I think the decision maker again is if you want to do high speed off road. Performance damping really come into play where you have a lot of energy involved, which means suspension travels a lot in a short amount of time. For street driving, overlanding, and slow speed rock crawling, you don't really need performance damping. When you go up in price, the other two features you start to see is remote reservoir and compression adjuster, which we reviewed in the last video. Both of those help you lower the shock pressure in the monotube. So in my opinion, if you know you want to do high speed, I will always go with the remote reservoir with compression adjuster. It is not for cooling like we reviewed last time, but for lower pressure. However, if you're not really into high speed stuff, and you just want a good quality, reliable, good old shock, then I will actually go with the Iron Man over the Fox, even if you have more money to burn, simply because this has less maintenance. Now, if we compare the Phone Cell Pro to the lower end stuff, what you're really getting is a much beefier shock for thermal performance, as well as the threaded body ride height adjustment. I hope at this point you know if this suspension product is the right choice for you. To me, I won't be installing this on my FJ because I have long travel suspension and I want performance damping. But if you want a beefy, reliable, low maintenance setup just for good old regular off-road, then I think this is an excellent choice. I kind of see the Phone Cell Pro analogous to the Toyota 1GRFE 4-liter V6 engine, which exists in most Foreigner and FJ. It doesn't have stellar performance numbers, nor it will win you any races. But for us modest, everyday enthusiasts, then it is reliable and bulletproof. Alright, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.